Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today we have a very special lecture on one of the most important control concepts that I have come across in my entire 30 plus year grappling career. And this idea is the idea of turn prevention. Before we get to that, I want to thank our sponsor. And this is a long time coming. JV Jiu Jitsu Online is up and ready to go online. We are launching with a few different programs, JVOS, changing the way you think about Jiu Jitsu forever. We are launching with JV TV, which is an unbelievable content at an unbelievable price. This is our monthly subscription service, as well as JV Basics for any of you guys that are looking to get into Jiu Jitsu, a very simple and very well-made basics course, which I call JV Basics, which addresses both street confrontation and street combat. So thank you to our sponsor, JV Jiu Jitsu Online, and let's get started with our video. So the idea of turn prevention is something that I don't think is talked about enough. I believe that there are two main control points which will change your grappling forever. Turn prevention and hand control. In this video, we're going to discuss the importance of turn prevention as well as the basic premises in which turn prevention is applied. The basic application and the basic idea and structure of what turn prevention is all about. So I'm going to call these lectures the hands and the turns. So we are going to be focusing in this video on turn prevention. Uh, I first want to discuss the benefits of turn prevention. Uh, and this is primarily from side mount. So we're talking from side mount. Turtle transition control. It prevents the transition to turtle. And it prevents the transition from turtle. So let's start with big picture strategy here. And these are the benefits of turn prevention. So first of all, you're looking to control the transition to turtle, so I call this turtle transition control. This prevents the transition to turtle from side mount, and it prevents the transition from side mount to turtle. Both of these are incredibly important because ultimately it helps eliminate standing up. So in order for an opponent to stand up, they can't really do it from side mount. They gotta turn to turtle, and now from turtle, they're able to start to work their way up. Another benefit of turn prevention is that it, it is incredibly fatiguing for the person on the bottom. It prevents guard retention and it forces energy explosions. The more energy explosions that we can generate from the bottom and we are able to control from the top, this will consume an, an opponent's energy and also start to slowly psychologically break them and discourage them from trying to escape. I think that this is incredibly valuable as time goes on, as matches go on, and as, as you start getting tired closer towards the end of matches or sparring sessions, the person who ha who's been more efficient and has more gas in the tank ultimately will be successful and be able to win. Turn prevention also produces feelings. It produces feelings of being stuck, again, psychologically demoralizing an opponent, it produces feelings of helplessness, and it produces feelings of being demoralized. So again, discouraging and basically mentally breaking a person and, and forcing them to give up psychologically. Let's talk about optimized control. It allows you to control an opponent's explosion. It slows down movement, so you are no longer chasing an opponent. So turn prevention part one, we're gonna first discuss the core turn prevention points. So we're talking core in the sense of the core of the body here. So here's your body. And we're looking at this from the side mount top perspective. So imagine you're side mounted on an opponent's right side, they're laying flat on their back here. So let's go over these core prevention points. First of all, we have the outer shoulder and the outer hip, the inner shoulder, and the inner hip. Now, if an opponent turns into you, you're gonna block the outer shoulder and or the outer hip. If the opponent turns away from you, you're controlling the inner shoulder or the inner hip. Very simple. Part two, arm stapling location. So arm stapling is another way that we 
look to prevent an opponent's turn. Again, we're looking from the side mount top perspective. You have the inner elbow or the inner wrist or the outer wrist. Those are all stapling locations, which again, prevent an opponent from turning. And again, we can be doing this from different positions, but more or less, you know, side mount top. But these stapling points are a big deal. You don't have to be chasing an opponent if you can just staple an arm or a wrist and that kind of stops them from being able to turn away from you or into you. Stapling the outside wrist will prevent the opponent from turning into you, but will allow the opponent to turn away from you. If an opponent tries to turn away from you, you can staple the elbow or the wrist or both, but it does not stop them from being able to, to turn into you. Now, hip hug control is something that I am a big fan of. Even though I don't always stop an opponent from turning, it definitely slows them down and it makes it kind of predictable that when they're turning, it buys me time to be able to get to the next point, which is generally turtle. So if an opponent tries to turn away from you by hugging the hip, you're stopping them from being able to do that. It's really, really cool, the inner hip here. Part three is counter tension. Now, counter tension is something that I use a lot. Yes, of course you have the stapling and you have the core points, but, but counter tension is something that is incredibly powerful. And as well as counter tension, understanding the points as well as the angle in which you're trying to counter the opponent from turning. So let's start if an opponent is on their back, their elbows are tight, their hands, their hands are kind of tucked in. Again, from the side mount top perspective, in order to stop an opponent from turning into you, you're going to use primary control points. The primary control points are the elbow and the knee, the inner elbow and the inner knee. The secondary control points are the hand or wrist or the ankle or foot. Again, you can use these locations uh, in order to stop an opponent from turning into you. They're not as good as your primary. Elbow and knee are much more stable because you're not having to deal with the ankle, knee joints, uh, the ankle and knee joints at the leg or the hand and wrist joint on the arm. The elbow and the knee are far more stable, but you can still use the wrist and the ankle to stop an opponent from turning using counter tension here. So again, the primary control points are the elbow and the knee, and the secondary control points are the wrist and the ankle. Counter tension means that the opponent can't turn into you, but they can turn away from you. And if they turn away, you can always use hip hug control, hip hug control in order to slow them down. In 30 plus years of grappling, I have not come across a more powerful concept, something that neutralizes an opponent as much as turn prevention. You can use these ideas throughout your game and they are incredibly valuable in order to optimize control of an opponent turning in or away from you. I hope you guys take advantage of, of these concepts that I'm sharing with you guys and you try them out. They will change your game forever. As always, if you like my content, click like and subscribe. And if you really like my content, go, go ahead and click the notification bell to be alerted of any future videos. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys real soon.